I highly suggest that if you want to understand the context of this video, you should watch the previous one first. Link can be found in the description or up in the corner. But nonetheless, ever since that video, there has been trailers, teasers, exclusive information from one of the devs, and much more. When the update released, unexpectedly, L Splash, Redables, I got my friends Omega, Todako, and Juicebox to join me along. It was going to be a separate gaming video of its own, but uh, my audio didn't record. <laughs> Anyways, we did see all the animations, and we have beaten the game on its update. There's gonna be more spoilers ahead, so if you don't care about that, then I shall speak my mind. First of all, at the beginning of the old video, I said, I don't hate doors. Yeah, because I like doors. Especially now, after they took time to polish what they had and make it better. I'll talk more about why I love this update and why it fixes a lot of problems later in this video. But for now, let's talk about the animations. Where do I start with this one? So, for starters, in my animation, I attempted to give more life to the puddle that Seek comes out of. Since, in the original, it just looks like he threw Play-Doh with the ground and it turned into a 3D model. Meanwhile, the new one has the puddle looking more jacket and more in the ground than just on the ground. Although, the jackedness of the new puddle makes it feel less liquidy and soft. But, it's alright. Next thing that's obvious is the new camera angles that comes with this animation. I'm assuming it's so you can see the stretchy goo texture that they had going on by using a beam. That's a nice detail that I really loved alongside one of the things I wanted to see in the reanimation, and that is to make it look like a struggle. From the looks of both puddles, it definitely looks heavy and stuck together properly, like a thick liquid. It's as if you were covered in a tank full of Elmer's glue, either dead or quicksand. But either way, I love that the arms come out first in some sort of desperate or tired motion, so then Seek could pull itself up. One thing that I did not see and was a little disappointed was that the eye didn't crawl itself up to the puddle and become a head. And due to the camera angles, you don't really get to see the eye at all until the very end. Unlike the previous animation, which the eye is clearly very clear, so people focus on it more. This one isn't a big issue, it's mostly the fact that the three previous rooms before the Seek chase, you get to see a lot of eyes appear. Finally, for Seek's chase, I like that the puddle shrinks in size after Seek fully exits it, and that the camera is farther away, mostly for the fact that they did what I also would have liked to see. And that's some sort of warning. The previous animation had Seek instantly skedaddling towards you, while my reimagination had Seek show a running startup pose before Seek starts dashing. But in the updated one, it has the best of both. It doesn't have Seek pause in place for too long, and he still runs towards the player. But this time, the camera focuses on him running towards you slightly longer. So this way you know what you're meant to do for this minigame. Also, look at the little cute Naruto run. I love that he's more floppy now, but not too floppy. You'll see what I mean by that. Some actor talked about how if you want to be good at acting, you need to over-exaggerate or enunciate your words. Give a stronger performance than you would do in real life. And that rant was just so I can say that figure getting distracted and running it towards you gets over-exaggerated in this animation. And over-exaggerate they did. For a reference, here's the animation before. And here it is now. Yeah. When originally animating figure myself, I made him more in control of the limbs since I was working off of the original material here, which clearly showcased figure being more firm or stiff. I'd like to clarify that I was just pointing out something and not insulting. 
and in control of his own skeleton structure, but I love this direction more. After reading some comments from the previous video, I realized that figure, the one we tried to avoid in the library minigame, is actually just a walking ragdoll, which explains why all the rigs I found in the toolbox were ragdolls, but nonetheless, making the ragdoll limp aspect of it more prominent really raised my opinion on figure as a creature and an enemy. For starters, figure now doesn't hold onto a shelf and doesn't check if there's anybody there. All of its movements are sporadic and random. Also, he's less careful about his actions. It really gives a sense of danger. Another thing I noticed is that now I can hear the lamp shattering pretty well. And I don't know if that's from the fact that I pointed it out, so now I can't unhear it. Or they actually raised the volume ever so slightly. Either way, even if people didn't hear it or play with sounds off like weirdos, they made figure look to the side, turn his whole body, prepare for a sprint, and run like never before, before crashing into something fragile. It's such a tiny detail that matters so much to bringing a character to life. There's not much else I can say about this animation, so I just skipped at the final one. This was my least favorite animation I've ever seen, but now it might be up there in the top tens. To start off, my positive rant about the updated animations. Figure no longer swings, but instead normally goes down the stairs. While I myself don't see how Figure would have possibly went down the stairs without stumbling or missing a step. But at least it's not swinging. But this stair animation is also smart because it will stop people from speedrunning up the stairs. Not much I have to say about this sequence, but the next one that happens after you place all the power switches is this ominous clip up figure walking in the shadows with only the backlight of the window, followed by a close-up shot of one of the wires being cut, getting activated and lighting up the gasoline on fire. Then this. This. I love. Figure gets all concerned, confused, worried, that type of stuff about the fire he's feeling before he goes into a panic. Showing figure to be more of a beast than an intelligent being, giving him some reckless personality. Anywho, he ends up bumping into things before jumping out of a window. And if I am correct, this includes a new score. Next sequence we have is after you complete the Power Breaker minigame. It shows where you have to go, which in this case is the elevator, followed by a shot of the door behind you getting punched by a figure, somehow. I don't have any issues with this one, other than the fact that if that figure is the same figure, I wish he was slightly burned or damaged. Because not only did he stand and run and fire, but he also fell out of a window. And that window looks high up. And finally, we have the ending cutscene. In the previous video, I mentioned if the scene was meant to have more impact to it, then either the doors should have been closing slowly while he approaches, or the doors themselves get bent or damaged from him bumping into them. I'm not sure how aggressive they wanted the figure to be, but if their plan was to make him aggressive, then maybe it should have been more, well, aggressive. And aggressive they made it. Not only does he rush towards the door and shake your entire screen, and also when he runs up to the elevator door, which by the way could last a little longer for the player to acknowledge what is happening, he just kind of stands there awkwardly as if you didn't hold the door for him to get in. Yes, now he also takes a few seconds to hit the, the gate a few times in hope that it would open or break. The camera even holds on the figure for longer to let the player acknowledge what happens. And also as a nice bonus, the player flinches and then calms down once they know they're in the clear. I already stated that I really like the part where the player just relaxes. But they had to make it better. Yes, now every different player has an animation for idling in the elevator. Also something else that I noticed that makes me very convinced that they took heavy inspiration from the video is that in this moment, the camera used to slowly pan up 
and so did the player's head. But now the duration of that has been shortened. So we can catch the player by surprise. With the additional bonus of player animations, the player now gives off actual emotions. The figure now bites into the elevator cords instead of pulling it and then gets pushed back into this little area, which is harder to see now, but maybe it's intentional. If it's not, then I would have taken the older mines than this one, but it's not that big of a problem. Now the player is actually in terror and is in a very similar pose to my concept art. It doesn't take long before the players and the objects in the elevator start levitating due to how fast the elevator is speeding down. When I first saw this, I was in shock. They took the animation and brought it from a zero to a hundred. Thank you, Doors developers, for over-exaggerating. And thank you for watching. Hotel Plus is a great update for the game. It doesn't add anything too big or too minuscule. It's mostly tiny changes that add to the replayability of the game, such as the greenhouse, the dark basements, and my favorite, Jeff's shop. Jeff's shop would be one of the many reasons I would ever return to play Floor 1. In fact, I think he'll be a fan favorite for sure. My friend Omega alone kept bugging me about him because he wanted him as a UGC item. What is that? Hola, they call me El Gobleno. Answer that everywhere, trying to get us. Dude, I want UGC of him so badly. Like, I want him on my, like, my back. Dude, I, I love Gobleno. I added this at the end of the video because I mostly wanted to talk about the animations instead of the entire update. And I did. And I'm glad I contributed something to the game. I haven't had time to respond to a lot of the comments in the previous video, and some of them I didn't even get a notification for. So, thank you for blowing up the video. I'm so glad most of you enjoyed it, and Redables, one of the developers, even got to see the video, which probably was used for inspiration. But I'm sorry to anyone I disappointed with the results. My animations were mostly just a brief idea made under an hour to get the message across rather than the final result that would appear in the final product. And I think I successfully did what I wanted to do. One specific type of comment that I want to reply to in a video would be the ones that say that figure can see in door 100, either with no reason attached or the fact that the model can be seen with light in its mouth. And I challenge, I counter, I object. Now that we have more playtime with figure at door 100, we can see that the same one that runs after us from the door is the same one that's blind to the core. I did not mean to rhyme that, I am very sorry. So no one, and I mean no ordinary person, will gaslight me into thinking that figure all of a sudden grew eyes, or had the ability to see. Other than that, I just want to end off by saying thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed the previous Doris video as well. If you're gonna subscribe, be aware that my content has no theme, and I have no upload schedule. I do YouTube for fun and as a side gig. But thanks to the people that watched the video, I was able to save up for a new computer to continue making these stuff. Without dragging this video any longer, yo I'm Casey, and see you guys in the next room. Ding it by accident. What? 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 I've been lied to? L splash? What the f? L splash? What the f